Okay, are we good to go? Okay, thank you everyone for joining our virtual book launch. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. Now, as much as we want to have a physical launch, it is almost impossible to do it now uh, in view of the volatile situation. You know, every other day we hear new clusters emerging and we cannot afford to wait for everything to sell down. So we must adapt and embrace uh, the new norm. Now, before we begin, I would like to introduce our distinguished guests who are joining our virtual launch. Uh, it gives us a great pleasure to welcome our guest of honor, Mr. Edwin Tong, uh, Minister for Culture, Community and Youth, and Second Minister for Law. Welcome, sir, and thank you for your time to grace this event. Indeed, my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Okay, next, uh, at the bottom of the screen is uh, none other than uh, Mr. Wan Hussein Zohri. Uh, as you know, part one, as we normally call, is an elder statesman who is uh, helmed this book project. Uh, he Thank was you. also the former principal of Kung Sri Lanang Secondary School from 1975 to 1978 before taking up public office. Welcome, Bawan. Thank you. How are you, Bawan? Okay? Fine. Very nice. All right. <laughs> and uh, on top of the screen on the right is Mr. Muhammad Jafar. Uh, 
Mr. Mohamed Jaffa is actually is uh, was the last principal of SNU from 1979 till the final curtain fell in 1987. Welcome, sir. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Of course, and the um, the star of this event is Miss Idaya Amin, the author of this sacred book. Welcome, Ida. How are you? Fine, thank you. I'm wearing the Tone Sri Lanang uh, uniform, just you know, with yeah, the badge. Okay. Right. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> okay, Idaya Amin was wearing the Sanila Utama Secondary School uh, uniform when, uh, during our grand reunion. So I think during the pop launch, I think she wants to be fair. She wants to use TSL uh, uniform. Okay, um, just just um, before we begin, yeah. After repeated delays, finally this is happening today. Uh, just sharing with everyone here the reason for this delay. Now, writing this historical book relied heavily on extensive research, countless interviews, and other sources to feature a diverse range of backgrounds and experiences. Mm -hmm. So inevitably, we veered into sensitive topics. Hence, getting approval from various government agencies and ministries is no mean feat, and it took us a while. Um, today, we can be proud to unveil the elevated product. Okay, so uh, let us begin uh, the event by listening to the man who started the ball rolling, uh, Mr. Wan Hussein Zuri. Silakan, Pak Wan, to say a few words. Right. Thank you, Sadun. Our guest of honor, Mr. Edwin Tong, Minister for Culture, Community and Youth, and Second Minister for Law and panel members. It gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you to this virtual launch of the book <coughs> Sang Nila Utama and Tun Sri Lanang, Singapore's Last Malay Schools. Special thanks go to Mr. Edwin Tong, our guest of honor, for accepting this invitation in spite of his busy schedule. Today is indeed a momentous day for the teach former teachers and students of both schools. It is momentous because after a long wait for the publication of this book has finally arrived. It is equally momentous to me personally because I was connected with both schools being the vice principal of Sangnila Utama from 1969 to 1974. <laughs> and the principal of Kun Sri Lanang from 1975 to 1978. Uh, let me just briefly recall how this project got started. There were three factors which triggered and uh, motivated me to embark on the publication of this book. First was my visit to the Ministry of Education Heritage Center in 2014. There I noticed that there were no exhibits at all on Sangnila Utama, the first Malay secondary school built by the PAP government in 1961. Second was the announcement in 2014 that the government would demolish the Sangnila Utama building uh, at Upper Aljunet Road. Uh, this saddened some uh, former uh, students that resulted in Mr. Yatiman Yusuf leading a group of former students for their last visit to the school. And third was, the, was when I was told by Ministry of Education that there are no documents or materials on Sangnila Utama when I sought for information in 2016. All these factors made the book publication committee and myself to hasten on the publication or documentation of the history of Sang Nila Utama and Tun Sri Lanang. This book is indeed a literary embodiment of SNU and Tun Sri Lanang. It is a reservoir of uh, the collective memories of these teachers and students. In short, this book encapsulates the physical environment, the 
educational and learning ambience of the school and the joy and the emotional joy and sadness of both the former teachers and students. Remembering uh, Sanila Utama. I'm heartened to note that the government has announced that there will be a Sangnila Utama Road and Sangnila Utama Boulevard at the Bidadari Housing Estate, which will be open soon. In addition, the government has also recognized Sangnila Utama by creating the Sangnila Utama Garden at Fort Canning. Now, remembering Tun Sri Lanang, his name is remembered by the Singapore Malay Language Council by its uh, award called the Anugrah Tun Sri Lanang. This is a prestigious and highest literary award given to local literary personalities for their contributions to the Malay literary scene in Singapore. Remembering Tun Sri Lanang, uh, I've just mentioned that. So in this respect, I would like to humbly suggest to the Ministry of Education to name its Malay Language Center at Bishan as Tun Sri Lanang Malay Language Center after, because he was a prominent figure in the history of Malay literature. In fact, there is already a precedent to this because the Ministry of Education has named the Tamil Language Center as Uma Pulava Tamil Language Center after a renowned Tamil literary figure. So I thought it would be appropriate to name that to the Malay Language Center. In conclusion, may I just uh, mention three other points. First, to the former teachers and students, this book will be a treasured collection. Second, to the Malay community, this book would be an unforgettable memory of the Malay education it experienced from the colonial times to its closure. And third, to the nation, this book would be a meaningful contribution to the multilingual system of education that existed in Singapore from the 60s to the 80s. Well, that's all I have to say for the opening address. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pak Wan, for that uh, rousing speech. Okay, uh, let, let us pause for a moment to watch this clip um, of Sangila Utama Secondary School during its formative years. This very modern, attractive looking secondary school was opened in 1960. 1,400 students attend this school, and when these pictures were taken, all but two of them were Malay. Every day begins with them saluting the flag of the Republic, and with a declaration of loyalty to their country, Singapore. The language of instruction used throughout all the school is Malay. Classes in the second language, English, were added this year. Also, there are two classes teaching the Chinese language to Malays. Because the students are Malays of the Republic of Singapore, they're entitled to free education throughout their schooling. Sangnila Utama Skola Menenga is most progressive in its outlook and thus in its teachings. The school is co-educational and boys and girls are taught together in the same class. This is the only Malay secondary school with pre-university classes. 
18 students went on to the University of Singapore, 9 to Nanyang University, and 6 to the University of Malaysia. In keeping with the new thinking about modern education, provision is made for science teaching to every class in the school. The chemistry laboratory has plenty of students, and many of them are girls who are keen to make progress with their science lessons. There are 62 teachers in this well-equipped and well-staffed school. Now, students at Sangnila Utama are prepared and ready to enter the scramble for jobs when school days are over. The boys get a thorough training in woodwork, metalwork and technical drawings. Modern, well-equipped workshops are furnished with good, man-sized modern machinery. The girls go through a wide variety of domestic science classes. Their courses include cookery, sewing and domestic work. Quite clearly, these girls have learned their lessons well, and they'll be able to make mealtimes always a pleasure. <laughs> Education has to do with training in living with others. Cooperation, responsibility and group life, respecting the other man, developing civic pride and consciousness. Sangnila Utama people know this well, and the school has many youth groups and cadet corps. It would not be easy to find a smarter and more efficient group than these women police cadets. They're a credit to themselves, to their school, and to their country, Singapore. The boys form the school's military cadet corps. We see them here doing their marching routine learning the first elements of stern discipline and immediate response to commands. The Boy Scouts are going to make sure they can cope with any emergency. They're completely absorbed with their make-believe casualties. and the school gives much attention to physical exercises and games. This is softball, a version of American baseball. The boys toughen up with rugby football, probably the best of all games for toughening up. At Sangnila Utama, there is a fresh and dynamic outlook towards schoolwork in order to better equip the students to find a living in this modern technological age. Okay, <laughs> okay that was uh, Sani Lautama Secondary School during its formative years. Now, this event will not be complete without first hearing from our guest of honor, Mr. Evin Chong, to say a few words. Thank you, Sharan. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Mr. Hussein Zuri, thank you for your speech earlier. Very inspiring. H. Muhammad bin Jaffa, who was the last principal of Sang Nila Utama Secondary School. Mr. Daya Amin, who authored the book, and I've been through the book. Thank you very much for putting this all together and making it so accessible and bringing the history to life. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to all of you. Thank you very much for inviting me to the launch. As uh, Papuan said earlier, the long-awaited launch and of the publication of Sang Nila Utama and Tan Sri Lanang, Singapore's last Malay schools. First, let me commend the organizers for holding this launch virtually. Um, earlier on, Sharon said, you know, it's been a long time waiting and we have no choice. Yes, it's true. Although we're not able to meet in person, it is still important for us to find ways, somewhat innovative ways, I must say, to come together and to continue to celebrate our efforts to promote our heritage. 
This really demonstrates the adaptability of Singaporeans. I know we've said it many times, but it continues to amaze me that we uh, adapt so easily. Many of us who have been uh, treating technology like oil does to water for so long has taken to it so easily. It's a key characteristic, I think, of Singapore and Singaporeans that will continue to serve us well in the future. This publication of Sang Nila Utama and Tan Sri Lanang, Singapore's last Malay schools, is really a culmination of a lot of ground up efforts to document the heritage of the two schools. Such an endeavor is really important for us as Singaporeans. And I don't mean for Malays, for Chinese, for Indians, for all of us as Singaporeans to trace, to understand, and also to reflect where we came from. Each of us would have had a cherished memory of our schooling days. I'm sure many of us can remember that fondly. These serve as reminders of the lessons that we have learned then and how we carry through life with those lessons that we've learned and they've come to define us also who we are today. This important effort has been spearheaded by none other than Inche Wan Hussein. As he said earlier, the former vice principal of Sang Nila Utama Secondary School and of course also former principal at Tan Sri Lanang Secondary School. The publication really records many memories spread across multiple generations, different people from different times, different uh, occasions in which they have been at the school. These have included many heartwarming tributes to remarkable teachers, as well as the achievements of students, such as uh, former senior parliamentary secretary, Yatiman Yusuf, even former Singapore football captain and a good friend of mine, Razali Saad, and the esteemed poet, Kamaria Bong. The book also pays tribute to the popularity of the renowned 60s pop band, the Impian Bataks, formed by the alumni. I think that's a testament to the kind of talent that you had at the school. But indeed, our heritage is not just a story of whence we came. It is really part of Singapore's identity, a set of collective memories that we, we know, we cherish, and which binds us to one another. So that effectively, through these collective memories, we call ourselves a nation. Some may think that heritage and identity are, is really simply a matter of race, religion, uh, language perhaps, but dig a little deeper and I'm certain that many will find that our own stories are indeed intertwined with those of other Singaporeans from different communities. This comes with really being part of an open, multiracial, multireligious, multicultural society. It is the diversity of our racial and religious identities in Singapore that has given us this beautiful tapestry of our society today. We have different threads, different kinds, different colors, different types, different thickness, all come together to form one beautiful, stunning uh, tapestry, comforting as a whole. We can, and indeed we should, celebrate this cultural witness where different communities influence and are influenced by each other, shaping each other as we develop together as one nation. And at the same time, our diversity has also given rise to one of the fundamental challenges that Singapore has faced since independence, forging a national unity and harmony amongst our different communities. We've done it several times at inception when we were independent, throughout the course of our history, and we continually have to do it. We continually work at it because it's far from a finished product. And with each different generation, I think fresh identities, fresh alliances, and fresh unities and bonds need to be built. Racial and religious harmony is and must continue to be amongst the foremost of objectives and aspirations of Singaporean society. To achieve this, it is important that we acknowledge everyone's communities, everyone's, every community's experience and celebrate them as integral parts of one shared heritage as one Singapore. As individual Singaporeans, we should also respect and appreciate our differences and unite as one people. And after all, that is what makes us truly uniquely Singapore. At my ministry, MCCY, we welcome ground up efforts such as this publication, which help to document and celebrate the experiences and memories of our communities. These offer new perspectives and the voices that we see add to the vibrancy of our multiracial Singapore society. These also offer useful spaces for us to thoroughly reflect upon our own core identity and values to forge a more cohesive and resilient society. The National Heritage Board supports such community-led projects through its Heritage Grant Scheme. This will encourage individuals, communities, uh, and also institutions alike to assume greater ownership 
um, think of new ideas, play a bigger role in safeguarding, promoting, sharing, and documenting our shared heritage. Since 2013, the scheme has supported close to 500 projects, which shows that really there's a role for everyone in celebrating Singapore's history and heritage. In conclusion, let me once again congratulate Ng Chik Wan Hussein and the rest of you at the book committee for the successful launch of the book. Here is a copy. I made my way through it. Let me commend the alumni for their initiative, the hard work, the contributions, without which this publication would not have been possible. Thank you very much for inviting me this, eve this afternoon here, and I wish all of you an enjoyable afternoon. Congratulations once again. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for that <laughs> rousing speech. Thank you, thank you. Um, the artwork on the book cover is actually a hand-painted drawing of the two schools done by uh, Chigu Yusuf Latif, who accidentally, incidentally taught at both schools. Thank you, Chigu. Um, the book is just on sale already. For alumni, they can order the book online. Uh, the link is provided at the respective alumni Facebook websites. For the public, the books are available at these uh, bookstores, Kino Kuniya at Hakashimaya and um, Warda Books at Bustra Street. And uh, the books are also made available in Malaysia and Brunei. Now, let us move uh, to the other side of the fence to see Tun Sri Lanang Secondary School. Now, most people in those days, yeah, they would say they talk about SNU, um, I would use the abbreviation freely. You know, somehow, the conversation will always lead to TSL. Now, the reason was probably due to the fact many who studied in TSL for four years for their secondary school made their way to SNU for their pre -U classes. That's how many of us were connected. Now, I think most alum, uh, TSL alum will be overcome with emotions, uh, just like how we felt when we pieced this clip together. Let us enjoy the clip uh, that we name as TSL Skola Kita. Thank you.
and <clears throat> that was um, Samsia Rahim and uh, Zulkifli Zayuddin, the two songbirds of TSL, giving their solemn tribute to their former school. Okay, right. <laughs> I think they will be emotionally charged right now. Now, moving along, let us hear from the uh, SNU last principal, Mr. Muhammad Jaffa. Uh, can we have the screen with uh, Mr. Muhammad Jaffa? Hello, Chigu. How are you, Chigu? Good, good. All right. So, uh, you know, perhaps share with us um, some of your high points during your tenure. Uh, you came in about mid 1979 to the final curtain fell. So I'm sure there's some high points during your uh, time there. Thank you, Sadun. Uh, Mr. Edwin Go, sorry, Mr. Edwin Tong, Minister for Culture, Community and Youth, and Second Minister for Law and Friends. I was appointed the last principal of Sangmila in 1979 some 15 years after I left SNU as a teacher. By then, there were only four Malay STEAM classes and 26 English STEAM classes. Now, talking about high points during my tenure as principal at SNU, there were lots, but I intend to zero in on three areas, namely the teachers, students, and the visit of President David Naya to the school. The teachers, now, as with any new appointment, adjusting to and addressing some administrative crises, I call it, were inevitable. But I was fortunate enough because these crises were quickly fired out. Now, the first thing I now noticed was the strong bond of friendship among the staff. The spirit of camaraderie among them was unique. In fact, in general, I found the teaching staff responsible and very caring to the students. Some of them had been in school for more than 10 years. It was easy for me to work with them. The support they gave me was unflinching. By and large, the teaching staff went out of the way to help students achieve. They meant often to discuss a lot of things and among them it scars were teaching uh, strategies, learning strategies to help students to learn, to answer questions, and so forth. Improving language efficiency was important, and there was a focus on the upgrading of students in linguistic competence and performance. In general, my relationship with my staff was collegial as well as cordial. Then, in school, I was the principal but outside, I was their friend. For example, during festive seasons, like Hari Raya, Chinese New Year, Bali, even Christmas, we got together. This cross-cultural exchange and interactions were important. Invariably, teachers would bring some of the members of the families to. This close and symmetrical relationship among the staff was evident. Even after SNU ceased to be a few of my teaching staff and I would meet once a month. You know, we went for tea, for lunch, uh, eating fish curry, and uh, for dinner. Of course, I I I, I praise uh, Cik Gemano Saad, who was the chief organizer for all social events. That was his forte. Now, uh, let me turn my attention to students. Sangyinan was not the first choice second choice, and maybe even the third choice of most of the students. Despite that, we managed to produce some successful students. Let me name just three of them. Uh, one, Associate Professor Li Cheng Chuan, Senior Consultant, Institute of Infectious Diseases and Epidemiology, Tan Tok Sing Hospital. Saadun Soit, a very successful, successful businessman. Professor Sata Bawani, CEO, Center for Executive Education. There are many others who have been successful, uh, teachers, master teachers, and so on. Now, at students' level, I used to walk around to have casual talk with them and also talk with them about their problems, about their concern, uh, about their ambition. Now, I, I found out that basically the motivation for the acquiring of knowledge for education was basically instrumental. In other words, they viewed education as a means to get jobs, good jobs. 
But I wanted more than that. I wanted them to develop their mental capacity, mental horizon, their well, 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 uh, world view of things and so on. I wanted them to use education to see things from different perspectives. I want them to appreciate life and so on. And in other words, I wanted the motivation to be integrative in nature. So what I did was uh, I invited students uh, to submit questions to share the concerns, problems. Few days before the assembly, we have a weekly assembly for me to address during the assembly. And the response were very encouraging. And I felt that this consultative approach worked well in fostering good communication with my students. Thirdly, the visits. Now, Sangmila was a premier and well-respected school. Many visits were made by politicians and dignitaries. For example, uh, Her Majesty uh, Raja Pramay Suri Agong uh, in 1963. Then Mr. Lee Kuan Yew in 1967. Uh, and finally, Mr. Devan Nair in July 1982. Uh, prior to the visit, my key personnel and I sat down and planned. We met, or rather I met a number of ministry officials and security officers to talk about the plan, about the schedule and so on. Uh, when he arrived, it was a pleasant surprise that he would not abide to what, do not adhere to what we have planned. As he claimed, he was people's president and he walked walk about anywhere he wanted to, talk to any teachers, students, and so on. Now, one of the classes that he visited, one of the uh, places he visited was Science Lab. And he spoke to Sadu and said, I, I, Sadu and I, I cannot remember what, I was there, but I couldn't remember what, what he said. Maybe Sadu and us about that. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> the president. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Cikgu Muhammad Jaffa. It's actually the president was asking me because I was doing some, uh, um, I think it was uh, um, something to do with the battery or something like that. So electrical parts, yeah. he was asking whether I can get electrocuted from uh, playing with this battery. So I said the uh, answer was uh, almost negligible. So anyway, um, before we, we, we sign off, sir, uh, being the last man standing, what were some of the most painful things to do during your final years? Perhaps you can share it with us, sir. Yeah. Uh, in view of falling enrollment, the school's PTC, uh, permitted teacher complement, was considerably be reduced. You know, every year I had to go back to the ministry to talk with the personnel officer. I remember him, Mr. V. Chu Game. And you know, always making a hard bargain with him. Wanted asked me to, for example, to release three teachers. I would argue that eventually probably just release two teachers and so on. So it was a difficult decision for me as many teachers had a very strong attachment to the school. I had to explain the rationale for the transfer and I'm glad that many of them understood. In my experience, carefully taking a systematic approach to problem solving help in the decision I had to make in my time at school. And then the last day of Sang Mila, there was another sad day, 31st December 97. All of us, a few of us, maybe about 12 or 13 of us who were still around, we had to put up a false front by smiling and joking with each other. But inside us, we were a sad bunch of teachers who had to bid goodbye to the school we love. And I remember we assigned Mr. Ahmad Safran, a very dedicated, very loyal, uh, non teaching staff to do the honor to padlock the school, to get that marks the end of Sangmila as an educational institution. Anyway, I'm glad that these memories are documented in this book. It is a meaningful, it is meaningful that the legacy of this historical and monumentally important school is remembered and its many stories shared with future generations. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> there was uh, rather emotional for us to hear that also. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's quite difficult, you know, because I know there is a few geography teachers, good quality, productive teachers that we had. 
so letting go of which which one to choose so it, it's quite difficult i understand your position yes. now anyway um then moving along can, can um, i think we can uh, move to the author uh, herself Macy Daya Amin, about her journey and the enormous challenges she faced writing this book uh, perhaps you can share with us uh, Chida. um good afternoon everybody uh yeah, so I'm the author of this book. When uh, part one first approached me and asked if I would like to work on this book. And uh, during that time, I think I was uh, working on my Kampong Glam book, which is a non-fiction uh, history book on Kampong Glam. And so I was, I was thinking, oh no, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I'm, I don't have time, you know, and all that. But because, um, you know, Pak Wan Hussein, I mean, he, you know, he's a very nice man. And, and I kind of feel guilty to, to turn him down. And then uh, I was, when I went back to reflect on what he said, and I'm quite ashamed to say that I I did not know who Ton Sri Lanang uh, was, and uh, and during when I went to secondary school, there uh, there were no longer the the two Malay schools, and I also remember quite remotely that I had some teachers in my secondary school who were actually from this these two schools, and then I thought, you know, uh, what a waste if we do not document uh, this very important. Uh, part of our history, and I, I, I said, okay, I will, I will work with you and the, uh, the, the alumni. So we, as he mentioned in his speech, we did not have any information at all. I think, uh, this is the most difficult book that I've ever worked on. I've worked on uh several nonfiction uh historical book uh before. But I think so far this is the most uh, challenging one. Uh, we do not have any information. We um, so we had we had to start from scratch, and uh, we what what do you have right? So we conducted interviews with former uh, students, uh, teachers, staff um, from three countries: Singapore, Malaysia, and Brunei. Uh, so in total, we uh, we uh, the the alumni, the book committee actually helped list um, the people to be interviewed, um, and uh, you know from from different of uh, different generations of of students, and uh, some from the integrated stream, some from the Malay stream, and in total, I think we inter uh, interviewed about eighty eight. Uh, 88 people uh, and like you know the Chinese believe 88 like it's a lucky number right? and we uh, we transcribe uh, 74 hours of um, of uh, for interview and also I uh, you know I look at the photographs uh, the magazines and then uh, I tended the alumni gatherings to uh, to to get um, a sense of how it feels like uh, to be uh, a student from the school um, and uh, and kind of um, you know I, I, I know that the responsibility um, is very heavy like I know when I when we went to uh, Brunei and Malaysia to interview the alumni and you could see the kind of uh, strong bond that existed with, that still exists between the teachers and and the student and you know with uh, Pak Wah Hussein and it kind of uh, taught me also a, a lesson you know like no matter uh, how old you are or how you know you're, you're still a student in your teacher's eyes and uh, so from all this, I try to uh, team uh, and make sense of, of uh, the stories and see what are the stories to write. And I remember that um, when I, I was leaving uh, Brunei and one of the former alumni pulled me aside and said that, oh, Hidayah, you know, make sure you do a good job. So I, I felt that it's such a heavy responsibility on me and... Um, and the stress that comes uh, with it and the um, expectations um, 
you know, from from alumni, and I, I didn't want I, I want the book to represent everybody, and I know maybe I'm not the best person to write it because I wasn't from those two schools, but after you know getting to know uh, the students and the teachers from these two schools, I felt that it is um, you know that I felt that I'm part of uh, these two schools, and. Uh, so yeah, so we 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 finally got the book out, and uh, with this, I just wanna you know thank uh, Pak Wan Hussein for giving me the opportunity uh, to uh, to to work on this book and uh, and the committee members who actually gave a lot of support and the people from my Halang Books team. Uh, uh, the researcher, the uh, the editor, the designer. In fact, the designer for the book, her father was a principal uh, in uh, in Sang Nila Utama. So basically, it is you know I think everybody has a stake in it. And later on, I found out that there was uh, some of my uh, elder aunties. Uh, they were from either of these schools. So I I felt that hey you know I'm I'm actually uh, you know I feel that. It is also a part of me that's in this in this book. So um, and I I just want to thank everybody and I just want to let you know that I did my best for this book and um, I hope I did not uh, I do not disappoint anyone um, and I apologize for any shortcomings and imperfections in the book. So. Uh, Thank you for the opportunity, and maybe I'll 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 end uh, with this saying by George Orwell, from his 1984 novel. He said, um, "The past was erased, the erosion was forgotten, the lie became the truth." So, with this book, I hope that we be among those who remember these two elite schools. They are like maybe your RI of the Malay schools, or even you can see the Cambridge of the Malay schools. And may the future generation not forget of these two wonderful schools. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Don't worry, Gaya, you did. Okay. <laughs> Actually, the book has gone through so many uh, filtration. <laughs> we, we, we covered every corner to make sure that uh, we have a comprehensive book. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go to our third clip. And um, this is actually uh, to see the SNU Road and uh, Sanila Utama Boulevard. Now, actually, the roads are still under construction and we are not be able to show exactly the finished products. So how they look like, but here are the markers. Um, can we show the clip, please? Utama akan diberi penghormatan baru tidak lama lagi. Sempena memperingati sejarah Singapura, Jalan Raya di Istiqlal Perumahan Bidadari akan dinamakan sebagai Sangila Utama Road. I'm very happy to announce that we will be renaming, we will be naming a road in Bidadari Estate as the Sangila Utama Road. I'm also happy to share that we will name a part of the new heritage walk within the Bidadari Estate as Sanila Utama Boulevard.
Okay, on that note, we have come to the end of our event. Uh, but before that, I would like to seize this opportunity to thank our two main sponsors, uh, Lee Foundation and uh, National Heritage Board, and other general sponsors like LBKM, who is former teachers and students of both schools, um, uh, to both uh, book and event committee members, you know who you are. Thank you for the perseverance, patience, and hard work to see this uh, project through till the end. And uh, shout out to Mr. Yatiman Yusuf, who is unfortunately unwell and could not join us. Thank you, Chegu, for the many behind the scenes effort that he specifically informed me not to mention, but many of us knew and deeply appreciate. And I would like to draw the attention of the SNU TSL bursary fund that is available for needy students, a generous donation from Datuk Rahman Saad, and alumnus of uh, SNU. And thank you for uh, thank you to our guest of honor, Mr. Edwin Tong. Thank you, sir. We are deeply honored for your eminent presence and to my other distinguished guests, uh, Mr. Wan Hussein Zori, uh, Mr. Muhammad Jafar, Ms. Hidayah Amin, for your time to share your journey and experiences. Now, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, before we sign off, this virtual launch is not possible without the tremendous help from our um, IT director, Mr. Khairi Johari. Perhaps you can show yourself, Khairi. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Khairi Johari, it's the technical director for this virtual event. Thank you so much. And... Um, I think I shall end uh, the event uh, by quoting Professor Tomiko, who posted this message in his Facebook page after reading the book. Now, although we no longer have uh, Chinese, Malay, and Tamil schools, we must keep these languages alive, and we must promote literature written by Singapore writers in those languages. Thank you for watching, uh, and stay safe. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a good weekend. Okay, I think... Uh...